is our society is committing suicide right now with this long war. And, man, I value your priorities, Kevin. Uh, I always talk into the damn break. Hang right there. We'll be right back with you, dude. I'm Angela Keaton for LibertyStickers.com. Admit it. Our public debate has been reduced to reading each other's bumper stickers. So visit LibertyStickers.com and find great stickers like The Surge is Working on You. What happens in Vegas stays in a government database forever. The right is wrong. The left is stupid. Barack Obama, bloodthirsty warmonger. LibertyStickers.com. That's 877-873-9626. LibertyStickers.com. Everyone else's stickers suck. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. I'm about to have my nervous breakdown. My head really hurts. If I don't find a way out of here, I'm gonna go to the I'm crazy and I'm hurt. All right, well, it's just like Condoleezza Rice and Rahm Emanuel said, every crisis is an opportunity. And as America falls apart, more and more people are realizing what's at the core of it all. You just heard Kevin Zeese call it by its true name, the long war. And, you know, when you said that there about, you know, are we going to have war for the rest of our lives? It got me thinking, you know, there are kids right now in this country who are old enough to skateboard, who are, you know, in fifth grade or something now, who've never known peacetime in their life. I mean, when I was a kid in the 80s, it was kind of the Cold War. And, geez, I hope Ronald Reagan doesn't get us into a nuclear war, but... There was no Vietnam going on. There was a relative peacetime. That was my childhood. And, you know, there are kids I care about very, very much that they've never, to them, this is just normal, Kevin. Their government just killing people every day is just the way things are. And not only that, I mean, of course, the Afghanistan war is the longest war in American history already. And its end is not anywhere near in sight. And in fact, things keep getting worse there. And, and, it's, and one of the great tragedies is the uh, lack of transparency. You know, uh, we don't even see the coffins, you know, coming home. Uh, we don't see uh, the President Obama going to funerals of soldiers. Uh, we certainly don't see the impact of the drones on the ground in Pakistan and Afghanistan on civilians. Uh, we, you know, President Obama even hid pictures, uh, photographs uh, of the Abu Ghraib. Uh, a, a torture scandal. So we're not even told the whole truth. So we have this ongoing war. Uh, you know, we've been in war for a decade and uh, almost, and uh, and 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 it look, at the end is not in sight. And you know, and we don't even know what's really happening in our name. And so I really applaud people like uh, Bradley Manning, who's accused of leaking that collateral attack video and other documents. I applaud WikiLeaks. Uh, in fact, I'm on the Bradley Manning uh, Support Committee Advisory Board. You go, go to BradleyManning.org and, and get involved in defending this young kid who knew when he released these documents that he saw uh, war crimes in, he knew he was facing potential life in prison. And that kind of coverage deserves our support. So I hope people will go and sign up, get involved. We're going to have a bunch of actions in the next uh, next 10 days or so. They're listed on the uh, Bradley Manning website. You can get involved there, uh, really get active there, and really you know show the government we want to know what's being done in our name. You know, before the break, you mentioned um, that all good people who oppose war, weapons, and empire can come together no matter what their views are on other economic issues. And I agree with that. And I would take it a step further and say we need to come together because a left only or a left-dominated anti-war movement cannot stop or end, you know, prevent or end wars. Uh, we proved that in Iraq. You know, when you know, before the Iraq War, we saw some of the largest demonstrations before a war in America's history. We ra- we racked up, uh, you know, literally millions of people protesting. It took a decade for Vietnam to get that strong. We did it before the war began, and it continued after the war. There were protests in Congress. The, you know, the Democrats took back control of the House uh, and, the, and the Congress in 2006 because of the anti-war movement, and yet we still failed to stop the war. It's ongoing today. And what that proves, I think, is beyond anyone's doubt now, is that uh, a left-only anti-war movement cannot succeed. In fact, the only time we ever slowed uh, a military spending bill uh, was when the left and right came together in Congress. 
uh, you know, and, that, and that's what it's going to take. And we need to build up, you know, both branches of that. We need to continue the outreach to unions, to environmentalists, to women's groups, to, uh, you know, civil rights groups, uh, uh, you know, on the left side. We also need to reach out on the right and, and, and let those traditional conservatives see that there are good reasons for conservatives to oppose war. I think with a Democratic president uh, in office, there's a, a better chance of doing that now than we've had in a long time. Uh, the Democratic commander-in-chief, a lot of Republicans and uh, conservatives are ready to criticize him. And uh, so this is an opportunity to really reach those people and get them involved and educate them and let them see why, no matter who is president, Democrat or Republican, war is not good. Uh, empire is not good for our national security. It makes more enemies than it, than it, than it stops. War is not good for our economy. Spending literally trillions of dollars on these wars is uh, I mean, borrowing, it to be able, borrowing the money to be able to do that. It's not good for our democracy. It undermines democracy. It's not good for the rule of law, which is also undermined. So All war right, now, and empire are not useful for the American way. The thing is, Kevin, i got to bring the bad news into this situation. Gaffney, Horowitz, Horowitz, of all people, we've got... I mean, uh, I'm sure you saw the last couple of Ramondos, or at least one of the last two. Uh, uh, Politico.com went and followed the money. We have the absolute lowest, most vilest scum of the bottom of the neoconservative movement dictating the entire American conversation now, apparently. And like in Tennessee, where the mosque that was, that's was that been there for 30 years never had a problem after 9-11 at all. Nine years later, David Horowitz yells jump at these freaking idiots, and they turn on their neighbors, the mosque in their neighborhood, because David Horowitz tells them to, and because the pro-Israel lobby, the war party, the worst part of it, uh, is determined to turn the Tea Party movement from an anti-bailout movement and a Ron Paulian leaning, man, maybe he's got a point about foreign policy type movement into a, no, what we really hate is the weak. And it's working. It's like snap your fingers and a right winger turns from, eh, Mike could be okay to the devil overnight. Well, yeah, no, that's definitely our problem. That's why it's so interesting the, the neocons have, become the enemies of traditional conservatives even more so than they become the enemies of people on the left. A lot of them come out of the left and move towards this neocon and position, and then, of course, you have the neoliberals, who are, you know, the, the folks behind the Democratic Leadership Conference, the corporate Democrats who support war. So we do have big enemies. We have big enemies, and they're supported in the corporate media as well. And so we have a lot. That's why it just highlights to me why it's even more important for us to emphasize people from across the political spectrum who oppose war and empire. We need Americans to see that no matter, no matter what your view is on the economy, no matter what your view is on gay rights, on civil rights, on women's rights, no matter what your view on other issues are, there are people who oppose war and empire who share your views. We need to show that there's an American opposition to war. And the fact is the polls often do show that. You know, uh, it takes a propaganda effort by the government to really pump up the weapons of mass destruction fears, months and months of drumbeats of war, in order to get the uh, American public to support the invasion of Iraq. Right now, the Afghanistan war has very high unpopularity. Uh, so we have the people on our side. But we need to show the people that we are organized enough to do something about it, and that's our tax, and that's where we have to form an American anti-war movement that brings people from across the political spectrum together to oppose one empire, to say, no, we don't want the long war to last for generations, for every American alive today to live the rest of his or her life with war as the dominant um, economic uh, spending uh, in the country. We need to take back our country, bring it back to it, bring it back home. That's why I love the name Come Home America. ComeHomeAmerica.us is the website, and then Come Home America is a phrase actually that comes out of Dr. Martin Luther King's Riverside speech against the Vietnam War. It was George McGovern's uh, uh, campaign slogan when he was opposed to the Vietnam War. But it's a, it's a, a phrase, Come Home America, that also rings true with people in the Midwest, people in the traditional conservative movement. It's a phrase that says what we really stand for. Let's put our, you know, uh, our economy in order first. Let's put our democracy in order first. Let's stop this intervention around the world um, and, and, and stop this militarism that's sucking the, the lifeblood out of our country. I have to say, time. Kevin, here, I have to say, for the ignorant out there, please just go to YouTube and look for Martin Luther King, Vietnam. That Riverside speech is the best speech a man ever gave to anybody ever, and it will make you 
wiser. Um, also, I want to say started, real quick. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, it just tied together war with domestic priorities. It was a brilliant speech, and I agree. People should listen to it and, and study it because it's one that will get you to understand that this anti-war is, is, is pro-American. Right. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? Just before you, I was talking with uh, John Basil Utley, the son of the famous anti-communist author, uh, Frieda Utley, and the associate publisher of the American Conservative Magazine. And just this morning, I posted three interviews of, I think they were all three lefties from the other day. Oh, yeah, it was Gareth Porter, Nick Terse, and uh, uh, anyway. Uh, so Those are all I, good people, man. You have the right people on. Oh, and it was... Um, Oh, and Juan Cole. So I posted yeah. these on, on my Facebook page, and this libertarian started attacking me for legitimizing the left and, and uh, you know, how terrible it is for me to try to work with leftists on the most important thing in the world. And, uh, and then I, I went over to the American Conservative Magazine to look for John Utley's article, and there on the front page of the American Conservative Magazine is Nick Terse and Juan Cole, two out of my three <laughs> guests right there. So... You know, there's a lesson there for people. And look, we're talking about killing people. We're talking about destroying the Bill of Rights forever. I mean, this is it. It's the only thing that matters is American foreign policy. That's it. Get it together, folks. Follow Kevin Z's. He will help you. ComeHomeAmerica.us. Voters for peace. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you a lot. Boy, I'm in an every interview with a random I own now, but oh well. Oh, well. <laughs>